Anyway, let's get to it. Nominees for the 96 Academy Awards have been announced. Six Academy. A lot of people are upset. Some people are saying their favorites got robbed. I don't really know anything about it, so let's take Academy a look at what's popping. Awards were announced just moments ago. I love this stuff. Fandango's managing editor Eric Davis joins us now to sort out all the results. Eric, let's start with Best Picture. I trust him immediately because of that hat. I feel like when you have a hat like that, you're a trustworthy individual when it comes to commentary on movies, the arts. Yeah. The nominations in that category. Let's see them on the screen. The Best Picture nominations. Ain't nobody's wearing a hat like that, if uh, especially publicly, on, on a setting like a TV show, unless they're very confident. Confidently wrong, but still confident. You know what I mean? Are American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, I haven't seen things, it, haven't seen it, have seen it, interest. heard no this color, is good, haven't seen Eric. it, saw no some color, of it. Purple, you know I'm okay, here, okay, here, here are my Best Picture nominees. Haven't seen it, haven't seen it, have seen it, but it's like not Oscar worthy, let's be real. Uh, Holdovers is i heard very good haven't seen it killers of the Fra flower moon watched like half of it maestro was so fucking boring watched like the first half hour and then had to tune out oppenheimer actually kind of great um saw it loved it uh past lives haven't seen it poor things haven't seen it the zone of interest heard incredible things about it but i have not seen it i don't even know what poor things is Eric, no color purple you I know think i'm fact, biased but is I this know. a snub i think it's a snub i i personally Barbie not Oscar worthy? All men? What? No, like, Barbie is like a bubblegum movie. What are we talking about? Like, it was fun. It's cool. It's exciting. But, like, it's not... I don't know. Am I crazy? Is that bait? Am I... Are you guys, like, actually... You're like, no, Barbie is like a... Barbie is 100% like a phenomenal product? Is that what you're saying? Or... I mean, maybe you guys are. Can bubblegum movies not be Oscar worthy? I mean, the Oscar classification is like circle jerky. Uh, oh my God, look how woke we are. And, um, you know, this is like, this is film, not movies. The Barbie, the Barbie movie is like, like a Marvel Cinematic Universe type beat. You know what I mean? It's called a popcorn movie, not a bubblegum movie. I don't know why I was calling it. I, I was saying bubblegum, but you get what I'm saying. Guys, that's crazy. It's a Mattel advertisement. Like what? It's a fun Mattel advertisement. More Oscar worthy than my show though. My show was just two hours of self fart smelling. Yeah, but Maestro is exactly the type of my show is exactly the type of movie that would be an Oscar bait somehow. You know what I mean? Because it's boring as fuck, but it's like a legendary composer that did a lot for the arts, right? So that's like exactly the type of movie that you make for Oscars. Maestro is Oscar bait. Barbie is just to sell you Mattel products, which is fine, but like, you know, it's like the Marvel Cinematic Universe type shit. I personally would have put the color purple in there. I also think Ava DuVernay's origin yes, could have origin. been a, better, a bigger Ooh, yeah. player this award season. Uh, but you know, I mean, I think- Let's this look is at the categories that we have though. Let's, let's, let's put those back up on the screen, please, Shantae. Okay, go ahead. I think this is one of the most entertaining lists of uh -huh. Best Picture nominees that we've seen in, in years. Even, even my man saying it. Even my man's saying it. He's saying this is one of the most entertaining lists, like, which is critics speak for, I didn't even have a hard time watching half of these movies. And I feel like you have to, you have to have a hard time watching an Oscar movie. Or if you're watching an Oscar bait movie, it can, it can be one of one of two things. One, white guy saves black people, becomes hero of all of the black folk, okay? In a pivotal civil rights uh, uh, moment, it's always a white guy that saves everybody, okay? That's number one. It makes every white guy feel great. It makes you feel woke just for watching it. And you go, oh my God, I love being a savior. I would be just like that guy, okay? The other type of movie, the other type of movie that is like Oscar bait is like anything that is tangentially related with Hollywood. Anything that's tangentially related with Hollywood, it can be good, it can be fun, it can be really fucking boring. But if it's related to Hollywood... Every single person will sit there and go, wow, I love that. I love a self-suck. We need, we need more of these. Not enough people celebrate the industry. You know what I mean? The most successful American franchise, the most successful American industry, okay, beyond the military industrial complex is motherfucking Hollywood. It's our greatest export, American brain rot. And yet these guys sit there and go, we really haven't 
we really haven't celebrated each other enough. Okay. That's the second type of uh, uh, Oscar bait type movie. And then, you know, you have, yeah, you have all of this stuff, I guess. I, I don't know. And then you have like biopics, shit like that. They love that. Now, biopic Hollywood theme or the suffering of poors and non-whites is just insta Oscar bait. Here's personally a uh, couple of things that I really like. First time writer directors with Core Jefferson and American Fiction. Yeah. Killing the film bros by forcing them to watch your media takes. I think film bros need to hear my media takes so that they can get back down to earth yes. a little bit. And Celine Song with Go Past Core. Lives. It's always great when somebody's first film yeah. that's yes, nominated yes. for Best yeah. Picture. Past Lives is a wonderful movie. It's it's really great movie about soulmates. And then alongside, I mean, legends. You have Martin Scorsese in there for Killers of the Flower Moon. I think Oppenheimer. Also, I think Killers of the Flower Moon, this is a will take, but I think Killers of the Flower Moon, like the Irishman was a little bit better, I think. I feel like I feel like he's just going after he's just going after movies for the sake of like being a guy that makes a four hour movie now. Bad take, holy hell. Sure. Bad take. I know. I mean I, I watched it. It was fine. It was cool. I say this as someone who like uh what do you call it? I say this for the record as someone who literally, uh, uh, I mean, I, I watched Oppenheimer and I loved it. That's the no, favorite. And good that's right. a favorite. Well, Oppenheimer's I mean, won everything. It won gold. Yeah. Even though it's up against heavy competition. I mean, you're talking yeah. about Killers. You're talking about Barbie. You're talking about Past Lives. Those are all incredibly yeah. powerful films. Yeah, yeah, but Oppenheimer's yeah. been but, sweeping. But look at Oppenheimer. It's the best reviewed film of the year on Rotten Tomatoes. It's the film that's won the most amount of awards. It's also it's really, 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 really good. good. <laughs> really good. Can we see Best Director, please, Shantae? Let's see Best Director in that category. Nominees are... Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese, Killers on the Fire Moon, Yorgos Lathimos, Poor Things, and Justine, Justine Trier for Anatomy of a Fall, and Jonathan Glazer. Dude, what the hell is... I thought the Anatomy of a Fall was a meme. Like, this is like a real fucking... This is a real movie. Like, what the hell's going on? This is... It's a legal drama set in the recent past in a chalet in the French Alps near Grenoble and a courtroom in Grenoble, France. So some guy dies, they fall and die. Is that what it is? <laughs> Plot. In an isolated mountain chalet near Grenoble, Samuel Molesky is playing music in his attic so loudly that his wife, German bisexual novelist Sandra Voider, asks to reschedule with the female student interviewing her. Their son Daniel returns from a long walk with his guide dog, Snoop, to find Samuel dead below his attic window. Talking to an old friend... Lawyer Vincent Renzi, Sandra says the fall must have been accidental. That's such a fun, that's such a funny way. Okay. Hassan, I'm begging you to shut the fuck up. Petition for Hassan to watch poor things and review Mark Ruffalo's stroke game? Sure. These are the zone of interest. No, no Greta, Greta Gerwig. Uh, Biggest story here. Uh -huh. Yeah, Greta Gerwig getting stumped for Barbie. She's been in this category all along. I think Justin Triot, Jonathan Glazer may be taking that spot from Greta Gerwig. But again, I think Christopher Nolan never won an Oscar, Christopher Nolan. He hasn't? Has never won an Oscar. Wow. One of those legends that still has is due. Wow. Also, okay, here. Here's a controversial take that I think a lot of people will agree with. I feel like the Oscars is always playing catch up. Don't get mad at me for saying this, but they always have like an Oscar des Oscar worthy year for these like legendary directors, legendary actors. And because they like don't get the Oscar when they actually deserve it, they'll always be like, all right, this year we're going to give it to you on a product that is not as good. Like Oppenheimer was good. Okay. But the reality is like, I don't think it's Christopher Nolan's best work. Right? So if he gets it this year, it's just like it's playing catch up. Anyway. I think he wins it here. I mean, look, he made a movie about a nuclear physicist that's like the most entertaining movie of the year. Like, right. the, the man deserves the Oscar. And yeah, that's the way to break it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Martin Scorsese, too. Well, yeah. I, yeah, Martin Scorsese is great. I think to see Nolan versus Scorsese is a really fun. Yeah, that's, that's a great fun. matchup. Okay, what's next? Best, Best actress. All right. And the nominees are, let's see what we have. Annette Benning Nyad, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Fire Mood. Yeah, but you can't say that about Oppenheimer. He directed the shit out of that movie. Yes, but I was just saying it's not like, dude, Christopher Nolan has such phenomenal bangers. Uh if, like not Tenet, but obviously I've obviously like Inception. 
uh, fucking Dark Knight. Like, that is the peak of, of cape shit. Like, genre-defining. No one will ever do it like that. Prestige? Memento? Tenet more like 10 out of 10? No, no. Tenet is like... Oh, I don't think Tenet is as good. Huh. Irrelevant if it's his best work or not? I mean, I think Dark Knight is not peak cape shit. No, it's not. That's why I'm saying. I don't think it was... It, it, it look, took the genre of cape shit and turned it into something very different. Other film bros might get mad, but I think you're right about this one. Also, the Oscars is a lot of fart smelling or La La Land wouldn't have won shit and would have been relegated to a dumpster somewhere like it deserves. All right, let's continue. Sandra Uller, Anatomy of a Fall. Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, and Emma Stone. Poor things. Again, tough category, but Lily Gladstone Lily. has been, been sweeping it sweeping. so far, but yeah. people are talking about Emma Stone's performance. Not as much the movie, but her performance is knockout in Poor Things. Without a doubt. I think Lily Gladstone is the top story here. She becomes the first Native American woman ever nominated in this category. Also voted most likely to win an Oscar by her high school in her yearbooks <laughs> or her high school class <laughs> rallying around her here. But in order to win it, she is going to have to beat Emma Stone, who's sensational in Poor Things. Uh, I think, I mean, Emma Stone has won an Oscar before for La La Land. Emma Stone won the Critics' Choice Awards when they were together in the same category. However, both women won Best Actress at the Golden Globes when they were separated by category. So definitely a legitimate race for Best Actor. Okay, yeah. Best Actor best coming up next. Actor. What do we got here? Let's what see. What is it, Nate? For All right. Actor. So we got Bradley Cooper, yes. Coleman Domingo. Yes. yes. Paul Giamatti. For Rustin, yes. Cillian Murphy and Jeffrey Wright. But Killian Murphy's been winning everything so far. He do, has do you think it'll be different this time for Oscar? I mean, not ever. Paul Giamatti won Critics' Choice. I think Paul Giamatti deserves it just because it's Paul Giamatti, a national hero, an American legend, okay? The absolute goat. I haven't even seen it. I haven't even seen the holdovers or whatever. He's a, uh, he's, he's, and I love Cillian Murphy, but, or Killian Murphy, but God, dude, Paul Giamatti, my king. That's like right. Emma That's Stone right. did, yeah. you know, but Killian Murphy won the Golden Globe, as did Paul Giamatti. So I think very similar to Best Actress race, we have a, a legitimate race. For I think Bradley Cooper will win, though. Best Actor, too. Between those two? Yes. Killian nominated for the first time. I yes. think it's really great. Uh, Coleman Domingo nominated for the first time. Very excited about that. Because Rust in the movie hasn't gotten a lot of buzz, but everybody's has. But his performance his, is great. Yeah. Uh, but I also, look, I'm a Jeffrey Wright stan. Yeah. I, 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 I like too. everything he's ever put on celluloid. So and so I'm rooting for Jeffrey, but I know that Killian's been. Yeah, if Jeffrey Wright wins, Biden will end up winning in November. Jeffrey Wright is the number one Democrat. He is the, the biggest Dem. Yeah, I yeah, think but, it's great he's nominated. But shout okay. out to Jeffrey. Nominated for an Oscar for the first time. He's won a Golden Globe, an Emmy, a Tony. Never nominated for an Oscar. Shout out to Jeffrey and to Cord Jefferson for that, for that yeah. movie. All right, let's see. Supporting actress next. Oh, there we go. Emily Blunt, Daniel Brooks. Yay, Color Purple. America nice. Ferreira, Jodie Foster, Dave Vine, Joy Randolph, who's been killing it so far. For me, it's a, a competition. America, America Ferrera, that's a surprise yes. on that list. Yeah, that's a surprise. A lot of people say that's like her monologue that she has at the end of Barbie is what. That's crazy. I'm sorry. That's an insane thing to put someone as a, oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. That is what got her. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah she has, it was powerful. But yeah. Danielle's not going Oh, shut up. He's like, hey, he's like, yeah, I'm a feminist, by the way. <laughs> Ladies, I'm a feminist. Oh, uh, hey, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Color purple. Have I mentioned that I'm biased? <laughs> no, but Danielle Brooks is amazing yes. in the color I think purple. she wins this. Yes. I, first time nominee, Emily Blunt, legendary actress, first time nominee. All right, Emily, Mrs. Really Krasinski, great. we yeah. like that too. It's the year of first timers, which I, I think is awesome. I always love yeah. that story. Best supporting actor is. Sterling K. Brown, Robert De Niro, Robert Downey Jr., Ryan Gosling, Mark Ruffalo. All incredible. By the way, low key insanely stacked list like literally the most stacked list here like what the fuck what a list dude what a fucking list oh my god seconds left eric what are you thinking uh, mark ruffalo makes history this is his fourth nomination in this category he ties the most amount an actor has ever been nominated in this category don't think he's gonna win i think robert downey jr will take it for oppenheimer it would be his first ever oscar shout out sterling k Brown. all right we will know march De Niro was evil as fuck. Yeah, De Niro had at least double Leo's lines in that movie too. Super deserved at his age and what a grinder. Yeah, dude, the man can't keep... The man can't stop himself from popping out babies at the age of 80, dog. He needs those lines, okay? He gets... 
If Robert Downey Jr. wins this year, it's a retro fix for him being snubbed for Tropic Thunder. Robert Downey Jr. deserves an Oscar for everything he's done. I, he's great. Check out the Lily Gladstone statement. What is that? Lily Gladstone being the first Native American to be Oscar nominated for Best Actress. Why am I the first? Why did it have to take this long for me to be the first Indigenous North American? Most of the films that show up in these categories are shot on Indigenous land in North America, and it's taken this long. Um, full list of Oscar noms. Best Actor, we looked at Best Actress, Annette Benning in Niad, Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Hüller in Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan on Maestro, Emma Stone on Poor Things. Dude, you triggered like every annoying chatter on the planet messaging me about films. Never talk about movies again. I love talking about movies because it's so like low stakes. You know what I mean? And my position is the correct one because it's the dumbest position you can have. It's completely uneducated. And it's an issue that you can have a completely uneducated opinion on because it's supposed to be about fun. And if you take it super seriously, then you're in the wrong. You're automatically in the wrong. The moment that you take this super seriously and you get like very upset, you're in the wrong. You're gatekeepy and you're wrong. Okay. Best supporting actor. We saw best supporting actress, Emily Blunt and Oppenheimer. In, in Guappenheimer, uh, Danielle Brooks in the color purple. America Ferreira. What is, I don't even know what the color purple is. What is that? Is an American coming of age musical period drama film directed by uh, Blitz Bazawule. Marcus Gradley's screenplay is based on the stage musical of the same name, which is in turn based by the 1982 novel of the same name by Alice Walker. It's the second film adaptation of the novel based on the book. <clears throat> Hassan Get a Grip. It's about black people being poor, a perfect Oscar movie. One of the formative works of black feminism. Yeah, but it seems like there's no white people in it, which is why it's not the perfect Oscar movie. I don't see a, <laughs> I don't see a white person being like the hero in this story, judging by the cover. And that immediately says to me, uh, sorry, sweaty Hassan got no black friends confirmed. If you think any of my friends watch movies, you're out of your mind. The author of the original book refused to publish a book in Israel for BDS. That's awesome. What we're not going to do is diminish the color purple is simply a poor black film. No, that's not. That person is is uh, almost as uneducated on it as I am. Caroline and Will. Oh, that's true. They watch all the movies. You're right. But we never talk about movies because I'm so uneducated on them. I guess mostly because I don't watch movies. So I never talk to my friends about movies at all. Now you come at me, ask me about some shit from the Pornhub Awards or the ABN. I got some takes on that. My Ma's on scene, dude. Okay. Which porn director was revolutionary this year? Okay. Come Sluts. Episode five. Season three. Okay. They were doing shit. They were doing shit with the cum shots that no one's ever thought of before. Okay. You're talking Dutch angle cum shots without showcasing the asshole. Very tasteful. Very tasteful stuff. Okay. Yeah. Christopher Nolan could never do that. Christopher Nolan would blow your eardrums out. Not blow your back out. While you're watching the the cinematography, you know what I mean? And now I regret having you on speaker. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> uh, international feature film, Io Capitano. Eh, Italian. Perfect Days, Japan. Society of the Snow, Spain. The Teacher's Lounge in Germany. The Zone of Interest in the United Kingdom. I feel like... Saying a UK movie is considered international is kind of funny. I know it's a controversial take, okay? But I feel like UK and Hollywood are just like, it's this, okay? Like, what do you mean? It's international. It's, okay, so it's just more Hollywood. Like, it literally is the, it is an extension of Hollywood. Half of the actors are from the UK. <laughs> Even all the Americans on TV are played by Brits. Yes, British people are so much better at portraying Americans than Americans are. Animated feature of film, The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dream, Spider-Man Across Spider-Verse. Um, adaptive screenplay, American fiction, Barbie, Oppenheimer, more like Wappenheimer, Guappenheimer, um, Walkenheimer, Poor Things. What was the what was the Gucci main? Uh Guappenheimer. Yeah. Floppenheimer movie absolutely stunk in the box office. Wait, really? I think the language that matters the movie is german it's polish and yiddish original scheme uh, screenplay visual effect okay i don't really care just like 
Documentary feature film, 20 Days in Mariupol. Oh, shit. That's like, that's a killer last year. You know what I mean? This year, I don't know. I feel like Americans don't want to think about Ukraine at all. They're like, oh, no. Maybe that's like a, maybe that's like a, hey, we haven't forgotten about Ukraine. Like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? <clears throat> you and Will need to do a weekly show segment where you and him watch an American classic. You've never seen like Jurassic Park and talk about it after. Sure. Yeah. If you watch the Hassan and live, it seems like it seems just about all the footage in 20 days. Honestly, what? Bobby Wine, the people's president, the eternal memory, four daughters to kill a tiger, original song. It never went away from American symphony. I'm just Ken from Barbie. What was I made for from Barbie? That's crazy. They got two Barbie songs in the original song. The fire inside from flaming hot, uh, a song for my people from killers of the flower moon documentary feature film cinematography, El Conde killers of the flower moon, maestro Oppenheimer, poor things, costume design, Barbie killers of the flower moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, poor things. Flaming hot is a movie about Cheetos. No, it's not shut the fuck up. So that's, there's no shot that you're being for real. El Conde is about Pinochet being a vampire. What? Okay, that sounds kind of fire. Dude, I'm realizing I don't watch any of this stuff. I I haven't I've watched like three things. <laughs> the ABC's a book banning, the barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, The Last Repair Shop, Nine Nine and Waipo. Like I I have watched that's because you're a weeb, bro. Yeah, well, guess what? Despite being a weeb, I haven't seen the Heron movie either. The boy and the heron. I haven't seen that, and that's weeb. Is this a joke, right? You're joking. You're joking. You're joking. You're joking. You're joking. Flamin' Hot's a banger dude. It's about a Hispanic janitor that created what's known as Flamin' Hot products for Frito-Lay. Okay, that seems kind of cool. It's like a real... It's a fake story, though. Oh, really? So that's also just the ad, then?